Hello and welcome to the Boston Structural Heart Course. In this sneak peek of the master class in three-dimensional imaging, we're going to be starting a new section and that is how I do it series that relates to image optimization, acquisition, and interpretation of three-dimensional echocardiography. In this first section, you'll get an introduction to the live narrow sector three-dimensional imaging using the Philips EPIC system. We will soon be using other systems to demonstrate the narrow sector imaging with um, different vendors you know, available in the market. So enjoy the How I Do It series that relates to my way of doing a narrow sector live uh, three-dimensional TE imaging. Enjoy. Okay, so welcome. And today we'll be going over the live narrow sector three-dimensional imaging. The various nuances of image optimization, image acquisition, and optimizing the frame rate, spatial resolution, as well as sector size. For this exercise and activity, we'll be using the Philips EPIC CVX 3D machine. For those of you who are using this machine, they'll find this uh, post very, very useful. So the step one of acquiring any three-dimensional uh, image is to first of all, optimize the two-dimensional image. Where most of the settings are patient and machine specific and structure specific, but the general, general settings of the machine that I would like to go over uh, before we go on to do a live uh, three-dimensional imaging. So first and foremost is the machine output, which could be either general as it is being highlighted over here, or it could be resolution, which means it is a high frequency you know, range of the system when the penetration is uh, minimal, or you could go to the penetration mode, which is the lower frequency range of the TE probe when greater penetration and deeper imaging is required. And all these changes, besides being reflected here, are also being shown in this triangle, which we refer to as the holy triangle of imaging, which means right now it's on the penetration mode, then we go on to the general imaging mode, and then we go on to the resolution mode. For the start of the three-dimensional imaging, I like to keep this uh, setting in the general imaging mode. The next setting is the resolution or the speed, which is a control which is below the machine, as you can see over here. Right now is it in the middle. When we go to resolution, as you dial it up the resolution, which means it maximizes the spatial resolution or maximizes the line density of these specific settings. You can also go to the middle again, or go to the speed aspect of it, which maximizes the spatial resolution and minimizes the line density. And these changes that I'm making over here are being reflected in the frame rate here right now, which is optimized to temporal resolution. When I dial it to the middle, it goes to 53 hertz. And when I go all the way down to the resolution mode, which means the spatial resolution has been optimized and therefore the frame rate is appropriately reduced. So I like to keep it in the middle. My next setting is the compression, which I like to actually dial down to mid 40s because this reduces the grayscale of the imaging and makes the image look sharper. And that's one of the settings that I like to keep it in mid 40s. I like to keep the persistence in the off position, which again makes the image a little bit grainier and sharper. The next most important thing is the time gain compensation. As you can see in this graphic, my time, ga time gain compensation knobs are all in the middle, which I keep it in the middle. Let's just say we that another important control is the focus, which we like to keep it in the middle or in the region of interest is identified. We keep the focus in the middle of the, of the, of the scan plane, that's we presume that that's where the image will be optimized. And the last button before I press any 3D image button is the eye scan button, which optimizes all the rest of the gains and the time gain compensation to the, to the images that you've made. Now comes the question of harmonics. Now that's again a very controversial question because uh, you know uh, turning on the harmonics implies that the output power of the system is increased and therefore harmonics are generated that improve the image quality. Now when you press the harmonics button, that is reflected in the holy triangle of imaging as a dotted line. And also demonstrates the range of you know, T uh, frequencies that can be uh, uh, of this T probe. For example, 
Right now we're in the general imaging mode, which means we are in the middle of 2.7 to 5.4 megahertz. But when I go to penetration mode, it goes to the lower end of the range of the frequencies. Uh, but the important thing to consider is when using harmonics, you cannot use the resolution mode because that implies that you're using a very high frequency range of the TE probe. And at that high frequency range, the output power tends to get reduced and harmonics are not generated. So therefore, when you're using harmonics, you can either use the penetration or the general imaging mode. And I generally like to use the penetration mode because that puts you down to the lowest range of the frequencies of the TE probe. So having optimized these 2D images, which relates to the 2D output between penetration and resolution, and between resolution and speed, and turning on the harmonics, we finally press the live narrow sector button, which is, which is the narrow sector live image, which is probe responsive, and we can see this image generated in the form of a frustum. So I will go on to the true view because it uh, you know, shows up nicely on the screen. And you can see that this is the live narrow sector image which is being rotated. It has a lateral width. It also has a elevational width. And these are the two important components of this, um, of this control. So now if you look at the lower end of the image, you can see the three controls uh, along the Along, the, along this region over here, which are the 3D rotate, which I'm using right now, or if I left click the button, I go to the elevational position, which means you can change the elevational position of the frustum with using the scroll ball. And the next thing is the lateral position, which can be changed from side to side. So these are the two important controls besides the 3D rotate button that rotates it around the z-axis, you can change the elevational position, which goes from this side to side, as well as the lateral position, which can be changed from this side to side, which means if you are looking at a region of interest, let's just say mitral valve, and if I 3D rotate the frustum like this, z-rotate it, and if I simply change the position from this side to this side, I can scan through a region of interest without doing anything at all. Another aspect of the elevational position is that you can also set the initial elevation to either back, to the center, or front, which sets the default of the generation of the frustum when you, when you do that. So in our machine, it is default to the back position, and therefore, but you can change it either. So the elevational position can be changed either by through the scroll ball by using this control, or you can change the front, center, or the back elevation of the frustum. So these are the three things that relate to the position of the frustum. Now comes an important uh, aspect, and that relates to the frame rate, the sector size, and the spatial resolution. So let's get to the sector size first, which means increasing both the lateral and the elevational width. Now using this control on the lower end, I can increase the elevational width, which means for the same sector size in the lateral aspect, I'm increasing the thickness of the elevation, but you can see that quite appropriately as I do this thing, which means as the sector size uh, you know, re reduces, the frame rate appropriately is increased, and as the sector size increases, the, the frame rate reduces, but that's only in the elevational aspect. The key part over here is that I can also increase the lateral size with a similar impact on the frame rate, which means reduction in sector size for the same, for the same imaging depth has led to increase in frame rate and increase in the sector size for the same imaging uh, depth has led to an increase in the frame rate. So this is the the you know trade off between the frame rate the sector size and the and spatial resolution now if i just simply looking at the lateral aspect of it and i reduce the lateral size as you can see that our um, frame rate has increased and also possibly our line density has increased but now having uh, you know uh, concentrated on the 
impact of sector size on the frame rate, we can also go to another very important control, and that's the frame rate and the spatial resolution, or spatial and temporal resolution. And that is controlled by this specific control, which shows resolution plus, resolution, balanced, frame rate, or frame rate plus. Now, as you can see, we have the same sector size in the lateral as well as the elevational width. And if I press the frame rate button, the frame rate has increased to 51 hertz. Now, you can easily deduce from this fact that from the same sector size and imaging depth, if the frame rate has increased, that implies that the line density has been reduced. And if I go to resolution plus for the same sector size and imaging depth, now the frame rate is only 16 hertz, which implies that the line density has been maximized and the frame rate is appropriately reduced. So this is an interplay between sector size, both in the elevational and the lateral aspect, and choosing either a balanced image that is between you know, frame rate and spatial resolution, or choosing frame rate when we want to see a very fast moving structure with now as you can see I chose frame rate plus and the frame rate has increased to 51 hertz and when I chose resolution plus it reduced the frame rate to 16 hertz albeit with a very high spatial resolution. So these are all trade-offs between the, the sector size, frame rate as well as the temporal resolution and spatial resolution. So you have to decide what is important for you at that time and what do you want to see? Too much, which is increasing the lateral size as well as increasing the elevational width. This is when you really want to see this too is, much. This is a, a frustum which is, encompasses pretty much the entire sector size. However, this will obviously result in a significant reduction in uh, temporal resolution, which is manifest as a frame rate of only three hertz and at the same time, significant reduction in the line density. Now if I reduce the elevational width, reduce the lateral size, reduce the elevational width even more, and when we look at the sector size in this direction, now our frame rate is 12 hertz. Now I can choose of these controls either to use it for frame rate plus, which takes it up to 37 hertz, or I can choose to use resolution plus, which is only about 12 hertz now optimized to spatial resolution. Now this is the narrow sector image. And we have now an elevation width as well as a sector size as well as a frame rate of 8 hertz. Now if I want the best of both the worlds, which means I want the maximal spatial resolution, maximal temporal resolution, as well as sector size, I can choose to acquire this image over six beats, which means use six narrow sectors and later on stitch them together to get a very high frame rate, a very high line density, and therefore at the same time an appropriate sector size also. But the problem with this image is that this is not live, it is a reconstructed virtual image that consists of six or four of those beats. For example, now this consists of four beats which have been stitched together to produce a sector size that was pre-selected. So that's the way of you know, optimizing both sector size, line density, as well as, uh, as, well as your uh, uh, for temporal resolution. So this being the narrow sector, we learn to optimize the image, to decide before we start imaging whether we want penetration, general imaging or resolution, whether or not we want harmonics, and finally using either line density, sector size, or temporal resolution uh, as the main focus of our imaging and then acquire that image.